When I was on my coffee break, somebody actually sent in a question. They said, just, we're not microscopic enough. I really want to understand everything microscopically. And they were bothered by this wire. What's really going on when you say there's no resistance when we think of the wire as perfect? So let's look at a sort of a Drew to model idea of what's going on. Let's draw a nice, good conducting wire section that then hits a resistive section and then back to a conducting wire. Right? So this is good wire and this is resistor. And this is wire again. So we talked about it in the circuit. We said it flows though no potential drop, meaning no loss of energy here, then all your loss is here, and then no loss here. But let's think about what the charge carrier really is experiencing in its real life. Okay. As it moves along. Okay. It's the same current flows all the way through. Okay. So we have some current flowing through here, it's flowing through here. And it's flowing through here. And in this case, they have the same cross-sectional area. So they all have the same V drift. They all have the same V drift. Because remember, V drift was the volume density of carriers times their charge uh, times the area times V drift. And all those things are the same. It's just a similar cross-section. It's just that here, inherently, something is different to make it a resistor. Now. Since this is a good conductor, its tau is very large. So it can go a long time between collisions. But it has to maintain the same V drift. Because the same current has to flow everywhere. If you had current flowing different amounts in different sections, you'd have charge building up on the surfaces. That's not what happens. It just flows. So this thing has a large tau. And it has to maintain the same V drift. It must be something kind of like that. Right? This thing is a poor conductor. It's our resistor. It has a very small tau. Okay. So it collides very often, but it has to keep about the same average velocity. So it must do that. And then back to the wire, it must do kind of like that. If you're going to have these two things be different in this way, that this one has a very infrequent tau and this one has a very frequent tau, that's pretty much how you have to draw it. Okay? If it's going to collide every so often, it has to get up here to make the average be there. That's what it has to look like. There's that one's tau. But let's think about what we said about what's happening inside the material. This one has a low acceleration, has a, is a long time to get to the same velocity. It's a low acceleration. You can just see it. That slope is low. And here, and here it's got a high acceleration. <coughs> okay. For the carrier to get up to that average velocity every time between these frequent collisions, it has to accelerate really hard. And then here we're back down to low. That acceleration comes from the field. What that means is here you have a low E field. And here you've got to have a high E field. Because that's what sets. Remember, this is QE over M. Q is the charge, M is the mass. Those are constant. It's the electric field that's changing. So if you want to think about this, as you go through the wire, what's actually happening is you have a teeny electric field here, and you have a big electric field here. Then you have a teeny electric field again. You get a small electric field in the wire because it doesn't need a very big electric field to maintain uh, the same drift velocity of the charge carriers. Because they hardly ever collide, just a little bit of electric field accelerates them really fast, and you don't need a big electric field. Small electric field means what? It means a small potential difference. So if you have these equally linked spaces and you're trying to make different fields, they have the same dis uh, distance. So this would need a lot more potential drop than this one. And that's why we say the potential stays basically constant through these wires. And then all your potential drop is here. And then the potential stays pretty much constant in this wire. So if you want to think, it in ter think of it in terms of Drude, you can uh, think that, well, basically, you don't need a big potential drop because you don't need a big E field because the collisions are pretty infrequent. This, you don't necessarily need this to understand a circuit, but you can really go that far to really understand microscopically what's happening in these circuits.